Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up your animation controller in a way where you don't have a crazy web like this going on, and you can actually change your animations and code. We're basically going to set up a code-based state machine so that when we reach a certain point in code, we'll just have it change to the animation we want to play, and we don't need any of these connectors between each of the different animations. But another thing we're going to do is make it so that when we have different sets of the same animation, we will actually use a blend tree to further switch between them so we only need one idle blend tree one walk blend tree one swing blend tree and so on and so forth so the end result of this is that our animator should look a lot cleaner what we'll do so to get things started rather than having idle down idle right and idle up as separate animations here i will right click on the graph here go to create state and do from new blend tree so i'll double click into this blend tree Let's click here, go to the inspector. I'll change the name of it to be idle so that it's more clear what we're doing. And then blend type, we'll do 2D simple directional. So this is going to take two parameters, the X input and the Y input. And we'll just pass this in from the code script. So this way our code only needs to know to switch to which kind of state, idle or move but the animator will still switch between the four directions, up, down, left, right. So let's create some parameters over in the animator. I'll go ahead and add a float, and let's say x move, add another float, y move. And then for this blend tree over on the right, I'm gonna change the parameters to x move and y move. And I'll remove the first default parameter blend, so get rid of that. So now we need to add four motions over here on the right. So I'll do add motion field and just do that four times so for the motions this is going to be our idle options so idle down idle right idle up and we'll need another idle right as well so if you had an idle left animation uh you could go ahead and put this in we'll just be flipping the sprite around for this particular character so uh, the idle down is going to be position of zero and i'll put negative 1.1 here the reason it's negative 1.1 and not negative 1 is so that we can prioritize left and right movement. So if you're pressing two directions, it's going to choose the left animation to play. Uh, so if you're moving diagonally, basically it uses left right animations because the input value is closer to this than this because this animation is put down here at negative 1.1. So for idle up, we want 0, 1.1. For idle right, we want 1. And then we want one copy for negative 1. If you had uh, idle left animation you would put uh, idle left negative one here so those are our four animations and depending on what our input values x move and, and y move are it's going to select between these automatically for what it's going to display for our character so on the base layer i'll click here rename this to idle i'll take the entry set state machine default state connect that to idle and we can delete these three animations from the graph so now we basically repeat this for these options down here, but we don't need to completely redo everything. I can just delete all these, click on this, control C, control V to paste it in, paste it in again, and then I'll rename this one to walk and this one to swing. So now let's jump into these blend trees, double click, click on the blend tree, select the motions. So, so idle down is gonna be replaced with walk down. Idle right is gonna be replaced with walk right. Idle up is going to be walk up, and then idle right again is going to be walk right. I also rename the blend tree up here to walk so it's clear. Go back out, do the same thing for swing or any other animations you have, if you have an attack animation, whatever. Uh, now click on this. Let's rename this to swing. Select the animations. So anything down becomes the down animation. Swing right, swing up, and then swing right again. Okay, and that is basically our animator setup. So now we just need code that will actually change between these depending on an internal state and the script. So now we just need to have a script change these. We could create a completely separate script. I'll go ahead and edit my player controller script. So edit the script. Okay, and now we need to take these input values and set them on the animator controller uh, so that when we're in these blend states, it can switch between the different directions. So let's get the animator component inside of the script. So over here, animator as a private variable, m animator, and then on start, we'll get that animator from the game object. 
m animator equals get component animator. And then down here on move, I only want to actually change the direction for our animator if the move input is not zero. So I'm going to do if m move input that does not equal vector two dot zero, then we'll do animator dot. Then we'll do m animator dot set. Uh, let's see float. And I think I called it move X. We can always double check by checking the animator. And we'll set that to M move input dot X. Then we just do the same thing for the Y M animator dot set float move Y. And that's move input dot Y. Okay, so this should already let us switch between the different idle animations. Let's go ahead, test the game real quick. I'll hit play and uh, the parameters don't exist. So I must have renamed them incorrectly. So it's X move and Y move. Just make sure that those are actually correct. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And we can see the uh, idle right animation works. If I press left, it's still showing right because we haven't flipped this right. But up works, down works, right works. So that's pretty much working as intended for setting the parameters. So now let's also get the sprite renderer component from the game object. So M sprite renderer, just like before, we'll just get the component. That's, of course, of type sprite renderer. So down here in the same section, we can check if the X move is less than zero, greater than zero, or of course, the only other possibility is equal to zero, in which case we'll just leave it alone. So if M move input is greater than zero, then we're going to take the sprite render. So M sprite render. M is for member, by the way, if that wasn't obvious. And we're going to take the, let's see, flip X and set that to false because our character faces to the right by default. So otherwise, else if M move input is less than zero. And this is the dot X, by the way, for facing left or right. Then we'll take this and set it to true. Okay, so let's go back out, check the game, hit play, press left, and our character is facing to the left. If I press right, the character is facing to the right. If I press up, well, it's really irrelevant whether it's left or right. So uh, that is pretty much our four directional movement. So that is pretty much our four directional facing, and we only needed three animations to do it. So you don't have. So let's create some states up at the top. I'll do it as an enum variable so that we can have a easy human to read way of representing those states. So let's do a public enum. I'll call it player states and let's create a few states. So idle walk swing. Let's come down here below this bright renderer and let's create a variable for the current state. So player states current state. Also create a property with a setter function. So I also create a property with the setter function so that whenever we change the state, uh, we can just update the animator controller at that time to change to the right animation. So I'll create that up here, player states, and then current state. I'm going to give the uh, first letter a cap there since it's a property. And let's create the set functions. So when we set the current state, we're going to do m current state equals value. So that's whatever value we pass in. And then we'll do a switch on the m current state. So the first case is going to be uh, player states dot idle. So basically, if we just change the state into idle, what do we do? And what are we going to do here is we're going to tell the animator that we want to play the idle state. So m animator dot play. Okay, so this takes a state name. So that's going to be idle. And then we want player states walk. Actually, we could just pretty much copy and paste this three times. And then if you need any other states in the future, you just add them to the list here and here. So walk and then swing. So walk, swing. Okay. Uh, so now if we want to change the state, both the value and what the animator is playing, we just set this property. Um, now we need to figure out when in our code should we switch to that. So uh, that shouldn't be too hard for walk and idle. So if the movement isn't zero, we can basically set the current state. It's going to be equal to player states dot walk, at least for now. Uh, obviously, the logic will get a little bit more complicated when we add in extra stuff like attacks or swings. So for instance, you would prioritize a button press if you want it to swing rather than to play the walk animation. And then else down here for now, we can do current state equals player states dot idle. 
let's just start with those two. And back to the game. Let's go ahead, hit play, and try moving around. And you can see our animations are actually playing. And when I stop moving, we have the idle animation. So in a way, it's like magical because you don't have any connections between these different blend trees, but uh, the animation controller is being told what to do by the script rather than having connections between all of your different blend trees. So even if your list becomes 20 or 30 long, as long as your code can handle when it should switch to each state, you can just immediately switch to the one just by doing play animation name or play blend tree name rather. So now let's respond to the on fire event from the player input. So if you don't have a player input, it's probably because you're not using the input system package. So I have a video from the other day where I uh, was basically setting this up. So input system, it's just what replaces the classical unity input system uh, with some new features. So if I look at my actions, I'll just double click here on the input action asset. You can see the default actions and these all correspond with different buttons you might press on a keyboard or a game controller, so on and so forth. So here, left button mouse would be a fire action. And of course you can change that to any keys you want. Doesn't need to be mouse button, of course. And when this action is triggered, you can see over here, the behavior send messages. It's going to send this on fire message and we can respond to that by creating a method with the same name inside of our player controller script or any other script attached to the game object for that matter. So let's create the response method void on fire. So uh, whenever the message is sent to the game object, we can respond to it with this function. So to finish this, we're going to need a couple things. First off, we're going to need to tell the player controller to change its state. So do current state equals player states dot swing. And what we can do up here at the top is add an extra thing where after we change the state, we immediately lock the state from being changed until the animation is done playing on the animation. So I'll set up a variable down here. So I'll call it m state lock. Okay, so essentially when this is set to false, we should not be changing the state. So I'll go up here and I'll actually put an if statement. If this is true, then we're not going to change the state even if we set up the code to do that. I would also say that uh, for a character that's going to be swinging a tool that they probably aren't going to be moving while uh, that animation is playing. So I could create a second variable for that here. You might be able to do it with the same variable, but I suppose there could be cases where a character could still move, but not be able to change the state. And there would also be cases where the character can't move, but should be able to change the state or the animation playing. So we will make those separate. I want to set the state lock to true. So state lock equals true. And then can move is false. So likewise, when we come back on swing finished, I want to take these and do the reverse. So the state lock is going to be false and can move is going to be true. So now to stop the character from moving and also changing direction, I'll check up here if it can actually move. So can M can move and other conditions as well in order to get down here to this code. So if can move is set to false, then our character is not going to move at all. And it's also not going to update the animation controller. It's just going to play the animation in the same direction it was facing. So now uh, we have on fire is going to enter the swing state. Now we just need to add on swing finished to our animation. So to do that, let's go back to the editor. Let's open up the animation window. And now for our swing animation, swing down, swing right, swing up, we need to add a animation event to the end. So right here at 015, I'm going to right click add animation event. Um, let's see. I'll move this window down here so we can see the inspector. So inspector, and then we select the function. So we have on swing finished, and we just do that for the three different swing directions. So this means that at the end of our animation, it's gonna unlock the state lock. It's going to make it so that the character can move again. So just do that three times, swing right, go to the end, right click, add animation event, click up here, change it to on swing finished. Next one, swing up. Go to the end, right click, add animation event, drop down, on swing finished. Okay, let's hit play and see if that works. So left click to do the on fire does not seem to actually trigger. 
Ah, uh, okay, I figured out what was going on. Uh, up here, the state lock thing, that should be not equal to true. <laughs> if it, So basically, if the state lock is false, equals equals false probably is a little bit more readable here. So if the state is not locked, so let's go back out, test this once again, I'll hit play, and we can hit uh, play to test our swing animation. So to make sure that it reverts back to just idling around, uh, let's take on swing finished and I'll set the current state to be equal to player states dot idle after the swing is done. And what we can also do is take the M can move part and just put that on idle and uh, walk up here. So when the character is idling, we should be able to move. And when the character is walking, we should be able to move as well. I'm not going to unlock the state here because we have a state lock check up here. So if the state isn't already unlocked, it would never get down to this code to begin with. So let's go back into here. Hit play. Test a swing. It stops immediately. Hit play. It stops up here. Okay, one go. Okay, and then we have our swing for the four directions. So at this point, all you need to do is throw a tool in his hand, and you basically have swing animations, all four directions, walking in all four directions, and idling in all four directions. And just to re-emphasize, that's without any direct connections here as well. So if you add a whole bunch more states, you just need to manage it in code. So of course, you could transition between your different blend trees using transitions with right-click make transition, and then transitions back but if you're not careful you may get a giant web going like this up to you it's just another way you can do things so for this video i've been chris i hope this was helpful for all of you out there thanks for watching and i'll see you in my future video content